Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of John chapter 9, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 12. And the he that's being spoken of here is Jesus. And as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be born blind? Jesus answered, It was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was in order that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no man can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and applied the clay to his eyes. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which translated means sent. And so he went away and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and those who previously saw him as a beggar were saying, is this not the one who used to sit and beg? And others were saying, well, this is he. Still others were saying, no, but he's like him. He kept saying, I'm the one. Therefore, they were saying to him, how were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went away and washed and I received sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. Pray with me. Lord, this day, give us not just sight, but insight that we might see you, Jesus, this day and in the days to come, here in worship and not all throughout the week. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Read a story about a French woman who uh, had a painting over her hot plate there in her kitchen. She liked the painting very much. The title of the painting was Christ Mocked. It was a picture that was oil on canvas, and it was a, a painting of, of Jesus being mocked before the crucifixion. One day she had a, an art evaluator that was visiting her home. The art evaluator asked her how long she'd had that. She really couldn't remember how long she'd had it. She said that she liked it very much, had it a long, long time. She kept it there in her kitchen over her hot plate. The art evaluator said, well, that might be worth some money. You need to have that appraised. Well, the woman did have it appraised, and it sold in 2019. This painting that had not just been around a little while, this painting was painted in the year 1280 by an Italian painter named Chibouye, at least I believe that's how you pronounce it. It was sold at auction for $26.8 million. <laughs> I love stories like that. Stories where the, the, the treasure's not hidden. The treasure was there all along. It's just nobody recognized it as treasure. That it wasn't a treasure that was, was buried it was treasure in plain sight. I love stories about treasures in plain sight. Treasures that are all around. It's just folks don't have eyes to see. This morning we read a story. It's just exactly like that. And it's a story that, that 
Well, it, it reveals to us not just with sight but with insight who Jesus is. That the Old Testament prophets said that there would be a time when the Messiah would come and the Messiah would give sight to the blind. And here, the Gospel of John gives only four healing miracles. And this is one of those four healing miracles. And it, the, 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 I read 12 verses, but the whole of the story takes up the whole chapter of chapter 9. In the very end of it, Jesus says, he says, I came into the world that those who do not see may see. Well, he's not talking about just physical sight. He's talking about might see with insight and not just sight. That we might see the treasure that others miss. And that's the way this story starts out, that Jesus sees the treasure that others missed. He and his disciples are, are walking along, and, and the disciples ask him, who sinned, this man or his parents? What they see is someone who's broken. I mean, he can't be of any use other than an object lesson. And they ask, who sinned, this man or his parents? Well, Jesus is very quick to answer, neither and what he does tell them is that it was that the works of God might d- be displayed in him. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about, that Jesus sees the treasure in others, that the works of God might be displayed in him, that you and I, we were, we were made in the image of God, that we might display the image of God, that we might reflect the image of God, that even for those that some might see as broken, we're still made to display, to reflect the light of God, the image of God. It was about 112 years ago that um, I was pastor of a little church out in the middle of nowhere. I was single, and uh, one of my best friends was a fellow named Ted. Ted would call often, and he would think it was pretty funny to say, what you doing this weekend? Because he knew every weekend I was going to be preaching on Sunday. I said, well, as a matter of fact, I'm preaching on Sunday. He thought that was pretty funny. And he said, well, you mind if I come over? He came over Sunday morning, stayed for the service, and then on over into Monday. I told him Monday morning that I needed to go to the church and then visit the hospitals, and we could get back together for lunch. He said, that's fine, I'll eat a little breakfast and, and go for a walk. Well, when we met together at, at lunch, he said, do you know the, the fellow Mr. Williams across the street from you? I said, well, I've met him. He said, yeah. He said, uh, he was sitting at the end of his driveway in a lawn chair this morning when I went for my walk. What a great guy. I said, yeah, he's a real nice guy. He said, we chatted for a long time. He said that just a couple of months ago, he had a heart surgery. And he came out to pick up his yard after the storm last night, and he came to pick out the stick, pick up the sticks, but he just gave out. He knew that the, the neighbors were looking at his yard and how sorry it looked, and, and so I picked up his sticks for him. He said, what a great guy. I said, yeah. I, he said, we visited for quite a while. He said, well, do you know Mrs. Johnson lives the block over? And I said, I don't think I do. He said, she's the woman that walks her dog all the time. I said, oh, I've seen that woman. I've said hello to her, but I I really haven't visited with her. He said, yeah, we we stopped and visited for a long time. Mrs. Johnson, turns out that um, she was pregnant, but she had a miscarriage about a month ago. She said that she gets out and walks the dog as much as she can because the walls just close in around her. Well, Ted, my friend Ted, He sees treasure in people. That's that Christ in him is able to see in others and what others don't see. And he creates a space, a space, a space that's open for others to be their, well, to be the best selves, to display the image of God, for others to display the light of God. And he sees treasure everywhere he goes, and, and, and he brings out the best in folks. Henry Nowen talks about this in his book, Reaching Out, that in all of us, there's this, 
There's this movement in the Christian life where we move from hostility to hospitality. Then in hostility, we tend to see in others. Well, we tend to see them, well, maybe as an annoyance or maybe as the disciples did, as, a, as an object lesson, something that we can benefit from. But that's not the way that God sees them. And that when God, God's Spirit begins to move in our lives, that we move from seeing others as an annoyance or as an object lesson to be, begin to create space for them. And we begin to move from hostility to hospitality where they can be their best selves. And we begin to see the treasure, the treasure in others. Jesus died on the cross to take, to take all those things that would blind us from seeing others as treasure. To take seeing them as an annoyance. To take seeing them as their last accident. Take away from our eyes seeing them as fearful, or worried, broken. And all those th things that would separate us from others, he nailed to the cross to take away their power. And when he rose from the grave, he rose to give you and me power, power that we might see in others' treasure, the works of God displayed in others. God on display in the lives of others, certainly treasure. And Jesus rose from the grave to give us that power. But we might not only see the treasure in others, we might see the treasure in ourselves. What Jesus tells us, man, is that God might be displayed in him. That all of us are created in the image of God. All of us are created that God might be displayed in us. That the light of God might be seen. That his image might be displayed in us and through us, and not just what, what others say about us, and not even those stories that we say about ourselves. Read a true story about a boy named Walt. Walt was sick. His mother took him to the doctor. He had trouble walking. The doctor told him that what he had was infantile paralysis, and then not only that, he would never walk, much less run. Well, his mother saw her son not as a, a diagnosis, but as the one that she loved. So she began to massage the boy's legs. She began to put hot compresses on his legs. And not only did, did Walt begin to walk, there came a time in his life where Walt began to run. The one that was told that he would never run. One day... He was watching a group of high school boys at a track meet. He was especially drawn to the, to the high jump. He saw these boys jumping over the high jump, and he said, one day I'm going to be world champion. Well, for someone who wasn't expected to walk or run, that seemed like a pipe dream. There was no way in the world that that could happen. But Walt began to, to work at it. He competed in high school in the high jump. He competed in college. And after college, he continued to compete in track meets and high jump. He got married. And one day, 1953, he was in an indoor track meet. He was competing for the high jump. He had cleared the bar at six feet, 11 and inches. And they moved the bar to six feet, 11 and a half inches. This was a, a world record if he could clear it. His first time came and he, he missed the bar, knocked the bar off. Second time he tried the high jump, knocked the bar off. The third time was the final time 
And in 1953, Walt Davis set a new world record. Six feet, 11 and a half inches was the height of his, his jump. That he saw in himself not what others said, not a diagnosis, not what others saw. And what God sees in you and me is not what others say. It's not even what we see in ourselves. Sometimes people see themselves as victim. Other times they see themselves as the abilities that they have or the abilities that they don't have. God has more for you and me than that. John 1, 9 says, To all who received him, and believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. That what God has in you and me is the power of the risen Christ, that we might become children of God, that we aren't born that from the family we're in or from the country that we're born in, that it's his Holy Spirit that makes us, molds us, crafts us into to his treasure, the children of God. It's a power that, that we don't have in ourselves. It's the treasure that he's placed in you and in me. It's not hidden. It's in plain sight for all those who, who can see, not with sight, but with insight. And as Jesus said, I came into the world that those who do not see may see. May you see God's treasure in you. May you see God's treasure in others. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning, may you see that Jesus is the treasure. Jesus tells a story about a, a merchant who goes looking for fine pearls, and then he finds one. He finds one pearl that is worth more than any other pearl that he's ever seen. So and he desires this one pearl so much that he sells everything that he has for this one pearl. Well, then you have to ask the question, does he have the pearl or does the pearl have him? And that's the question, isn't it? That's the question, isn't it? Do we see Jesus as our possession or does Jesus possess us? If Jesus is Lord, he's Lord of all of our lives and he possesses us. But if we have Jesus as our possession, well, we can try our best to, to put him in and out of our business any way that we want. I read a story about doc, that Dr. Graham Scroge told he was a great Scottish Bible teacher. A woman came to him one day and he was counseling her about what she should do. She had a decision to make and it was a difficult decision. She knew the decision she ought to make. She knew what God wanted her to do, but still, it was a dis difficult decision that God was calling on her life. Dr. Scroge finally took a piece of paper and he wrote on the piece of paper, no, comma, Lord. He gave it to the woman and he said, one of, this is an incomplete sentence and one of these words doesn't belong. I'd invite you to, to pray about it and mark out whichever word doesn't belong. He turned to pray for the woman and only seconds later he could hear her weeping and praying, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is either our Lord or he isn't. So often we might see this as, as something that is heavy handed and, and, and we wouldn't do that to somebody else. But the truth is still there. Jesus is either Lord or he isn't. So often we like to see Jesus as, as our Lord or, or, or as our, not as Lord, but as our friend or our comforter or our confidant. We like to see him as a good example, but anything but Lord. Lord means that he's He's the leader of the entire of our lives. And we like to say, no, my time is, is my time and I can do with my time what I want to do with my time rather than seeing Jesus as, as Lord 
the treasure of our lives, that, that no, our time, well, it, it belongs to Him. We like to say, well, no, my money is my money, and I can do with my money what, what I want with my money. And we try and block off a little piece of our lives, saying, well, Jesus is maybe, maybe the Lord or the friend of that part of our life, but not this part. Or maybe it's our habits that my business is my business. And we try and mark off a little part of our lives But Jesus is either Lord or he's not. Jesus is either the, the pearl of great price that we've sold everything, the treasure, or he's not. He's given his life for you and me. He rose from the grave that his power might live in you and me and that we have the eyes, eyes to see. And not only that, power to yield, to yield the whole of our lives to Him. This morning, it may be that there's a part of your life that you've tried to, to wall away, hold back. It might be your time, or it may be your money. It may be your habits, or your business, or it might be your friends, Friends that you know are not friends that, well, help you walk with Jesus as your Lord. And that this morning you have a decision to make. Know that you're not alone. That the risen Christ is alive in, in you and me. And through the power of His Holy Spirit, he gives us strength we don't have to turn the whole of our lives over to Him. And I want to pray with you. Pray with me right now. Jesus, You are Lord. And You are the, the one that leads the whole of our lives, not just pieces of it. Sometimes we try and put You in a, another place that, well, it makes You sweet Jesus who never demands anything of us friend or someone who just gives us comfort or maybe we try and get you just to to go ahead and okay and baptize whatever it is that we want out of life so this morning we come asking for forgiveness and asking that through your strength you begin to well you begin to change our vision our eyes to see that you are that pearl of great price. You are the treasure. And that, Lord, and you begin to, to, to change our lives, that we begin to see you in the lives of, of others. It may be that we begin to see the, the world as an annoyance or maybe as an object lesson. But Lord, change our vision that we might see you and others. Or maybe that we've believed in ourselves what others have said. Or maybe we believed that we are only as good as our last failure. Lord, may we see ourselves as, as your treasure, your children, and that you're able to display your light, your image in us. Give us those eyes that see, not just with sight, but with insight through your power. We pray that Jesus, you are Lord. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com.
www.thepeopleofgod.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image, and what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir, an organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.